right. So welcome, this is Dr. Lynn Patrick and I am here with Dr. Lisa Nash, who is board certified in emergency medicine and environmental medicine. And many of you may know is an expert in the evaluation and treatment of EMF related health conditions. She is my co-chair for the upcoming EMF conference 2019, which we've titled Diagnosis and Treatment effects of EMF exposure, because we're going to really concentrate uh, on a conference for healthcare providers designed to train them, to train you in the audience, hopefully listening right now, on how to do intakes, assessment, evaluation, and treatment of your patients for their EMF exposure-related conditions. So welcome, Lisa. Uh, why do you think this is important? Why should doctors come to this conference? What are they gonna learn? Well, first and foremost, it may help their own health. So family members often will become environmentally ill or sensitive, and 30% of those who are chemically sensitive become EMF sensitive or so. Um, so a large proportion of the regular normal, quote, normal population develops mild environmental illness. So any person, whether it's a lay person or a physician who learns this, is benefiting themselves, benefiting their family, and then, of course, we want to benefit our patients. But I find often you get people interested when they realize they themselves have some symptom of EMF sensitivity. And what might that be? Well, the first one I list is the cell phone heating up in your hand. Or if they use an earbud, the earbud heating up in the ear. People actually have to pull it out because it becomes uh, painful or they're intolerant to it. And the funny thing is, if you hand that hot cell phone to somebody else, they don't feel the heat if they're not EMF sensitive. So it's one of those things where your cells become sick, your body is not doing well for various reasons, which we'll get into, and you cannot handle the battery from the cell phone being held in your hand, let alone the cell phone technology and the frequencies related to 3G or Wi-Fi or other frequencies that people have problems with because all EMF sensitive patients are not sensitive to the same frequencies. So I could be sensitive to magnetic fields and not electric fields. And yes, the cell phone or no, the cell phone. So other symptoms people could get would be, you know, headaches, what they call brain fog, where you just can't think and you feel spaced out. But one of the most interesting things is dysautonomia getting worse while you're on the computer. So you sit down at the computer, especially a laptop with a large battery right near your chest or on your body, you know, sitting on your legs is awful. But if you're EMF sensitive, the heart can feel tight, like it's twisting. Or if you use a landline telephone and you're on it for a while, you can feel a twisting sensation. And I also used to get, because uh, I had EMF sensitivity, uh, dripping from the armpits. So you, you feel normal body temperature, but all of a sudden your autonomic nervous system is perceiving the electricity as uh, changing things and you feel uncomfortable. And if you don't know what it is, you'll keep using the device unaware that you need to get away from it. So these are signs and symptoms that I'm sure if healthcare providers don't ask about, they may not know about. So you have all this information from both your own experience and your experience working with patients uh, qualified at least in intake forms that you're gonna share with us. So we'll be able to actually take resources away from the conference that we'll be able to put into practice. And that's the whole conference is designed to train healthcare providers to walk away feeling like they have the resources and the knowledge they need. And I give away, when I give a talk, you know, I give away a checklist. <clears throat> it's called the brief, <clears throat> excuse me one sec. <clears throat> I give away at conferences a brief history, which has allergies, meds, surgeries, exposures, you know, toxic mold or chemicals, but also ask questions about dysautonomia, adrenal insufficiency, and EMF sensitivity. And one of the most obvious symptoms that people come in with is that they don't like fluorescent lighting. So when somebody says they don't like fluorescent lighting, boom, they're slightly EMF sensitive. Then you ask how they feel when they're in a large building with fluorescent lights, or if they work with fluorescent lights, do, do they get tired uh, and, and have trouble thinking? Well, this is not normal. I mean, regular people can work in fluorescent lighting, and those of us who are EMF sensitive can't be near it at all. In wow. fact, 
very severe EMF sensitive patients who don't like incandescent lighting at a high wattage. So what was funny, if I can tell a little vignette about what happened to myself, sure. I didn't know that I was chemically or electrically sensitive. I just knew I was dying. I went to a physician in California and uh, I was asked to fill out forms and go sit over in a chair. And I felt uncomfortable sitting next to the lamp. So I reached up and turned the light bulb until it was off, unscrewed it without knowing why. I just couldn't handle being near a light bulb. And then um, when I was speaking to the physician, I was uh, shocked later when I look back is that I got no flyer of information about what to do if you're chemically sensitive, what to do if you're EMF sensitive. And so my whole push is from the patient point of view, we deserve information right away to know how to avoid chemicals, how, how, what kind of a light bulb to buy, how not to use fluorescent lighting, how to use um, an air tubing headset, which you get on Amazon for like five or 10 bucks. And this air tubing prevents the EMF from being conducted to the head. People have a right to know that the cell phone use may harm them. And in fact, even if they're not EMF sensitive at the beginning, if they're mold exposed or pesticide exposed and they're really sick, holding the phone to their head is going to make them develop EMF sensitivity. Right. Like, and, and yeah. And we're actually going to have a workshop during the conference uh, that I think uh, you'll probably be at, right? To teach doctors about cell phone use and about what's actually in the legal disclaimer that the manufacturer of the cell phone puts inside the cell phone to let you know that holding it anywhere closer than five eighths of an inch to your body releases them from any liability they might have to damage that would be done by radiation exposure from the cell phone. It's inside everybody's cell phone. So we'll be actually doing a lot of hands-on stuff at the conference to teach docs about this, as well as remediation. We have uh, two industrial hygienists, uh, and biologists who are going to be teaching us at the workshop how do we help our patients learn about remediation and avoidance. And of course, you've been very fortunate, I think, because of your medical background and your um, education in environmental medicine to learn from someone who's done a tremendous amount of research in this area, Dr. Bill Ray, about how to actually treat EMF sensitivity. So I'm really looking forward to not only learning about evaluation and assessment from you, but actual treatment. Uh, and just because I really want um, healthcare providers out there to understand that treatment is available and uh, recovery is possible, can you just give us a little clue about what we might learn at the conference about treatment and recovery from EMF-induced illness? Well, First of all, I think I was one of the more sensitive people in, in the country that got well. And it's so amazing to be able to use electronic devices when I need to. And I'm just going to tell you that when I was sick, I was unable to do the dishes because I could feel the EMF from moving water in the kitchen uh, faucet. It was a long faucet from the 1950s. And I felt chest pain from running water. Yeah. So right on the edge of death, uh, you know, had a very interesting experience from a medical point of view with my arms going dark and the world going black, just from putting a landline phone on my chest. And I watched myself almost code, called 911, survived, got treated. And I learned a lot from Dr. Ray about the use of oxygen therapy, of uh, getting out of the moldy clothes, of the things that are most basic to getting well. And I know that some people are teaching courses right now that get into what I would say, get into genetics and tell people that it's uh, hopeless and that they have a, a genetic pattern that they could never recover from. I think this is bogus. I think everybody has a possibility of recovery. You need to do what tens of thousands of people have done before. Bill Ray, uh, really did a good job, you know, treating me and other people. But sometimes uh, new practitioners will come along and have additional treatment techniques. And I feel that the treatment of dysautonomia, the treatment of adrenal insufficiency, hormone deficiency, um, 
maybe looking at membranes and doing phosphatidylcholine uh, intravenously for people. These are the techniques that you can add to Dr. Ray's uh, techniques like neutralization and provocation and everything else that I learned from him in terms of intravenous vitamin therapy, et cetera, and sauna. And basically, I give people a lot of hope that they're going to get better and it may be a lot better in two weeks and then all the way better in two years and ne to never give up. Great. Well, I can't wait because I've learned so much from you in the past in other environmental medicine trainings and I know I'm going to learn so much more. I want to invite all of you to come to the Diagnosis and Treatment Effects of EMF Exposure Conference, September the 6th through the 8th, 2019. Uh, just FYI, the conference is at a retreat center where they will uh, turn the Wi-Fi off at night and serve us 100% organic local food. So if that's not an enticement, uh, I don't know what is, um, besides you being there, Dr. Naj, and I'm really honored. We went online to look at the hotel. It really looked kind of interesting and, you know. Well, it's a retreat center. So um, I'm honored that you're co-chairing this conference with me, and I'm really excited about it, and I look forward to seeing all of you there. Thanks so much. All righty.